Margin of error is a fairly straightforward and predictable SAT topic. Overall, it's not very likely to appear on your SAT, but on the rare occasions when it does, there are just a few basic ideas that will basically guarantee that you get the question right. First, make sure you understand what we mean by margin of error. A margin is an edge or border, like the margins in a book that surround the text. An error refers to inaccuracy. So the margin of error is giving us the edges of a range of values that capture the likely inaccuracy in a statistical survey. You should also know the definition of the word plausible, which is very common in margin of error questions. Let's say we wanted to know if people supported building a new playground in Los Angeles. We could try asking everyone what they think, but that would be nearly impossible because there are so many people who live in Los Angeles. This is known as the population, and it's the group that we're actually trying to measure. But since we can't ask everyone, we conduct a survey that asks just a smaller, random sample for their opinion. Let's say we found that 62% of the people in the sample support the new playground. Through lots of other statistical formulas that we do not need to know for the SAT, we also found that our sample survey has a margin of error of 3%. That means that when we extrapolate back to our total population, it's plausible or likely that the actual percent of people who support the park is somewhere between 59 and 65 percent. We got those numbers by adding and subtracting three from the 62 percent we found in our sample. The margin of error is a way of acknowledging that our survey was probably inaccurate, but it wasn't completely inaccurate. The margin of error gives us the boundaries of our inaccuracy, where we would still be able to reasonably conclude an actual value. Let's look at a sample SAT question. A random sample of finches in a forest has an estimated mean weight of 16.2 grams with an associated margin of error of 0.8 grams. Which of the following is the most appropriate conclusion about all of the finches in this forest? The math here is simple. We will add and subtract the margin of error from the mean. 16.2 minus 0.8 is 15.4, and 16.2 plus 0.8 is 17.0. This tells us that the actual mean is probably somewhere between 15.4 and 17.0. Choice A is the correct answer. It's plausible or likely that the actual mean weight is between 15.4 grams and 17.0 grams. Many correct answers for margin of error questions will sound a lot like this one, but let's explain why the wrong answers are wrong. Choice B is wrong because of the word exactly. Our survey found that the mean was 16.2, but that number is unlikely to hold if we found and weighed every single finch in this forest. It's definitely possible that the actual mean is 16.2, but it's actually pretty unlikely. If we treat this like a reading passage question, choice B is too strong, and choice A is better because it's weaker. Choice C is wrong because of the word impossible. It's also too strong. The margin of error gives us a range that is plausible, possible, reasonable, and likely, However, it's not a range that is definitive. It's also possible that the actual mean weight is 17.3 grams, which is outside of our range. It's very unlikely, but it's still possible. Choice D is wrong because it misunderstands what we're calculating. The 15.4 to 17.0 interval is likely values for the mean or average weight of the finches. It's definitely possible that there are some really fat finches out there that weigh more than 17 grams but we know nothing about the individual data points in this population. We were only interested in the average of those points. It's still very likely that there are data points that are greater than and less than our average. Let's look at a slightly more twisted example. In a town with population 10,000, a survey with a random sample of 200 people is conducted about a proposed law. The survey finds that 40% of people support the law with an associated margin of error of 2%. Which of the following is a plausible value for the total number of people in the town who support the law? We can start the same way as always. If we add and subtract the 2% margin of error from the survey value of 40%, we get an interval of 38% to 42%. But the question is asking how many people in the entire town could possibly support the law. We can find that range by applying the edges of the margin of error to the total population. 38% of 10,000 is 3,800 and 42% of 10,000 is 4,200. This means that it's plausible that somewhere between 3,800 and 4,200 people support the law. Choice C is the only value in that range. Choice A is a percent that falls within the margin of error. Choice B is a value that makes sense if we were asked how many people in the sample support the law. 
and choice D is outside the range, so it misunderstands what margin of error is telling us. We've covered pretty much everything you need to know for margin of error on the SAT. To sum up, most questions will involve adding and subtracting the margin of error from a given value. A slightly more advanced question might want us to use the interval as a proportion that we can apply to a larger population. Occasionally, we might be asked a slightly more conceptual fact about margin of error, comparing the margins of two different surveys. Essentially, if you increase the sample size, then you decrease the margin of error. In other words, if you survey more people, you are going to get a more accurate result. And remember that we will always be given the margin of error value on the SAT. In real life, there are complex formulas that calculate the margin of error based on a number of variables, but we will never need to know those formulas for the SAT. I promise that margin of error is a very easy topic once you understand the basics.